All right, so welcome back to part two. Yeah. Where we talk about games. Yeah, welcome to our video game podcast where we talk about uh, global warming. I mean, video games. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> the topic on everyone's mind uh, is the Nintendo Switch. Uh, and if you haven't heard our first part, uh, we go into detail, uh, basically kind of just going back and, and talking, kind of recapping the the initial live stream uh, where they announced uh, a bunch of information about the system. Uh, oh, I did. We did forget in the first episode to mention that you can awkwardly lounge on a couch while playing the Is Switch. it awkward or comfortable? Because I, I can imagine, you know, it, you got all wrapped up in a blanket, and you, you know, you know how you typically have to have like your hands like outside for yeah for anything. Like you just bundled all up, and you have the controllers underneath the blanket. I think that's great. I think that's really neat. I, I was referring to the moment in the oh, presentation yeah. where he's like, and you can relax your shoulders and head as he like awkwardly lay, half lays down on a couch that was just there for that one reason. Yeah. Comfy, I'm sure. Yeah, gotta love Nintendo broadcasts. Mm -hmm. They certainly aren't uh, are uh, aren't without their charm. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Yes, uh, is the thing. So we're gonna talk uh, about some of the the bigger stuff coming down the line, um, or more specifically the stuff that's just coming on later down the line. Yeah, we already talked about <laughs> launch games. And... Yeah. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. So uh, from what I've heard uh, and what they've shown, uh, this is basically Mario Kart 8. Uh, plus, I think, three new characters? Five. Five? Yeah, because you have, um, you have Dry Bones, King Boo, um, Bowser Jr., and then you have the Inkling Boy and Girl. Right. And then, uh, I don't think they've announced how many battle stages, but a, an actual proper battle mode is coming to Mario Kart. Yeah, um, that's... That's both like a really good thing, but I was a little disappointed because I was hoping for some new tracks. Yeah. Um, because the battle mode is kind of replacing anything else new. Like that's the one big new feature about it. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, it does look like a lot of fun. They brought back the Bob Bomb Blast mode from Double Dash. Yeah, and um, the I think uh, one of the, another big difference is uh, they've kind of brought back the double item slots yeah. from yeah. Double Dash. Uh, I'm not sure if you're able to like switch in between those. Uh, at will. I hope you can. Yeah, I don't see why. I feel like they're kind of bringing everything that uh, made Double Dash great into this game mm -hmm. and leaving out like the unnecessary things like having a second player in the cart. Yeah. Um, so it's... Uh, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, this will... I'm definitely getting this. This is going to be my... Uh, I'm probably more excited about it than I think you are. Cause yeah, you, I'm... I, had... I, I put like a hundred hours or so into Mario Kart 8 um, I've spent a lot of time one, one of the things I always do in Mario Kart games especially now that there's like online uh, ghosts that you can download is trying to uh, beat my record mm -hmm. in the time trial mode so I, I, I have most of these courses memorized you know like completely so I <laughs> I'll just podcast, edit that out. podcast is mega boring, yo. <laughs> um, I'm putting myself to sleep. So they announced four maps, mm -hmm. uh, two returning maps yes. from past games. Uh, very excited to see Luigi's Mansion as a battle stage. Yeah, um, and Battle Course One, mm -hmm. which actually looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, it has like a um, like the center of it is kind of like an anti anti gravity. No, that's that's I'm talking about the old one from Super Mario. Kart. Oh. No, they yeah. do have a new battle stadium. That's that one looks amazing. Mm -hmm. It's actually more like a track. It's like a big oval track, but then the center has an like slanted anti gravity uh, loop. Yeah, and that looks like a lot of fun. Um, and then they have the new uh, what is it called? Urchin underpass. Yeah, from Splatoon. So that's kind of the the mascot stage. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, they brought back the Boo item, which turns you invisible and lets you. Uh, I think they said it lets you steal items. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you can you can pass through other players and uh, obstacles. Well, not obstacles, but um, trap trap items. And weirdly enough, they brought back the feather from Super Mario Kart. Yeah, that hasn't been a thing since 1992. Yeah, I can see that being useful for like maybe speed runs. Uh, but beyond that, um, I don't really see it being. Well, it looks like it's helpful for battle mode. 
Because, like, if there's a red shell or a green shell or a banana or something, you can just jump right over it. Or yeah. they show jumping over walls. Yeah. So if you're being chased or something, you can just hop over the wall. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to, I'd have to like, see it in, in, in practice a little more and maybe, like, put it to the test. But I feel like if you could, if you can hold, like, the two power-ups, that could be, like, and switch through them. Mm-hmm. I feel like that, that, that would be something you'd want to save. Definitely. So... Uh, unless it's like one of those things where, uh, like that one item, I think it's the lightning. Will just like if you're holding anything, and just mm-hmm. forget about it. Is that in battle mode? Um, I don't know. I, I can't don't, remember. I don't think. I don't. I haven't played a battle mode in so long. Yeah. Becky and I play uh, we'll, double dash. Yeah, we play double dash a lot. So every so often we'll do. Uh, Luigi's Mansion is our favorite stage, which is uh, one of the reasons that I'm super excited because uh, it's our it's our favorite battle stage. Okay. So I'm super excited that and it it's looks coming. gorgeous. It does. Like it's the same layout, but it just looks beautiful. Yeah. Um, how many courses do you think they're going to add? Because um, they said they're they're only showing off four at the moment, but it sounded like there's at I, least a few more. I've heard uh, I I've heard rumors of eight. I was gonna say eight was that was that would be my guess. Yeah, eight. I think eight would be a, a reasonable uh, addition to to Mario Kart eight. Um, I, I mean, I really hope that they bring more uh, regular uh, racing tracks over. There are forty eight. That is how many they said, and that is that is the total number with the DLC in eight. Okay. So there are no new tracks. All right. So you don't necessarily have to uh, get any DLC. Um, that being said, though there's a possibility that they could have DLC for more. Yeah, they, they very much could. Um, I, I really I really wish they'd give me a discount on it, because mm-hmm. I'm still going back and forth. Like, I, the idea of being able to take Mario Kart 8 anywhere yeah. uh, is very appealing. But, I don't know, I've put so much time into this game. I'm kind of ready for 9. <laughs> yeah, well, tell you what, whatever I'll, it's called. I'll get 8 Deluxe, and then we can just play it whenever you come over. See, we could play online though if if uh, if I got it. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Um, I hope they do it, give it like a, a fifty dollar price tag. Yeah. Because I mean, it's, it, there's not anything new enough to really warrant the full sixty dollars. Yeah, but it's Nintendo, and Nintendo does what Nintendo wants. Yeah. So. Oh, there's also three new carts. I almost forgot about that. The uh, clown car. Yeah. And then two like ink-based weapon bikes. Yeah. So, uh, cool. Uh, a lot of cool stuff coming to Mario Kart 8. Uh, I think the biggest thing that, like, I haven't, because I haven't put as much time into it, um, the only thing that, like, I was, uh, I thought was sorely, uh, it was sorely lacking, uh, was the battle mode, and I'm just super happy that they, they're adding that. And that I'll be able to play it. <laughs> yeah, Mario Kart 8 is about as, close to a perfect video game as you can get Mm -hmm. like just everything graphics music gameplay battle mode really was the one thing that held it back so deluxe could be like the one of the best video games yeah or the best version yeah uh uh, it's definitely my favorite mario kart Mm -hmm. and i don't say that lightly because i'm a big fan of all of them yeah except maybe super circuit not so not so uh that's not such a big fan of. Which one's Super Circuit? Is that the, the Game Super Boy Advance? Oh, no, the Super Nintendo one's amazing. The Game Boy Advance one's not the best, in my opinion. Yeah. That we should we should do a uh, top Mario Mario Kart games discussion at some point. Top Mario Kart games. Well, I haven't played all the Mario Kart games, so oh. I, can't, huh. I, I can't really contribute that. Which ones haven't you played? Uh, I I don't think I've played Super Mario Kart. Uh, I don't think I've played the Game Boy one. Um, and I haven't really played enough of the DS uh, hmm. or 8. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're missing like half of them. Yeah. There aren't even 10. We can't do a top 10. <laughs> yeah. The top 8. I guess if we rank them, that would be... Oh, no, but you struggle with ranking things. I forgot. <laughs> That's not going to work well. Yeah. Um, moving on to ARMS. A new IP that Nintendo announced. Oh gosh, this was I think like one of the. I was I think this was the second thing that they showed. Yeah, because they were still showing off like they showed this during the tech portion because they were showing off the uh, motion controls. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Arms, uh, as you said, is a new IP, uh, and uh, bef- 
well, I was at I was at work uh, the day that the the, uh, the live stream was was coming, or was going to be shown. Um, and so while I was waiting uh, between calls, I was working on a bingo card, uh, and one of the card slots I had was new IP. So I was able to check that off. Uh, there's a little fun story for you, uh, free of charge. <laughs> um, if you send me the the image, I can put it up. Yeah, on I, screen. I didn't get a bingo. Yeah. I should have had I should have had more features on the on the card than I did new games. Yeah, because honestly, there weren't a lot of like new game announcements. Uh, a lot of it was stuff that like they were just confirming the stuff that we saw in the earlier trailer. Right. I, side note: I was surprised at how much they how much they had shown in the in the the initial reveal mm -hmm. that stayed true to what they announced. Yeah, I like that they said they were like, oh, you know, none of this stuff is official, and then everything turned out to be real. So. Yeah, it, to include like the 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 like three and a half seconds of like the Mario game. I wish they. I I think we said this, or at least I said this on uh, one of our past episodes, but I really wish they hadn't done that. I think the reveal would have been like much bigger mm -hmm. had that not been a like had I not seen that area before. Yeah, but we'll get to uh, that. Yeah, we'll get to that. So arms, uh, it's a it's a one on one uh, boxing game. It's um, a like fighting game mixed with a shooter is what they said described it as. Yeah. Uh, so you you control control the various characters. Uh, that I think they only had five uh, to show off, mm -hmm. um, but uh, it sounded like they were going to have more. Mm -hmm. They had they had the five, um, and uh, each character has like these these springy co kind of coiled arms with like these huge boxing gloves um, uh, at the ends of them, and basically you uh, you you hold the controllers uh, and or. E each controller in, in your hand, uh, and you you make like boxing motions, and you like you kind of tilt them towards each other to block, or you you kind of move them both in, in one direction to to dodge and, and kind of uh, move around, um, and it looks like so much fun. Uh, you, uh, you do a punch, and your arm goes like s like coiling towards uh, your opponent. Yeah, so that's where the like shooting element comes in because you do mm -hmm. have to aim. It's a very fast-paced game. A yeah. lot of jumping around. Uh, they have trampolines in a lot of the maps. Um, like the the basic one they showed off had is surrounded. Like the main arena is surrounded by trampolines. Mm -hmm. So you can like jump up back onto the trampoline wall and then like get a jump off of that. Yeah. So there's like a there's a lot of verticality mm -hmm. to it. Um, it it just looks it just looks so cool. It looks like it, it flows. Um, one of the neat things uh, they they said in the the treehouse stream uh, was uh, in re regards to the HD rumble. Uh, it, they described it as it felt like you could feel that coil like leap like mm. like running through the controller. Okay. Like you, it almost like they described it as it felt like it was actually like your arm was coiling out and and attacking. <clears throat> which I think is is really neat. Yeah, yeah. I guess we'll just have to uh, wait and see how the HD Rumble turns out. Yeah. But that sounds like a neat feature. Uh, yeah, uh, I like the uh, characters too. The character design. Mm -hmm. It's very much Nintendo. Yeah. Like each each character, they don't all have like springs on them. Like the main guy has like the coil spring, but then yeah. everyone I think else he's like Spring Boy. Yeah, or, or and it's like man. his hair is in a spring like yeah. shape. I, at first, it's I thought he was like like a toothpaste or something, <laughs> uh, just because it was like bright pinks and, and blues. Yeah. Um, so like all the other ones, like there's there's a girl in like a giant robot suit, mm -hmm. um, with like extendable wire arms, uh, and then there's Mummy Man, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the big tank of a guy. So he's, he moves a little more slowly, but he like packs a punch and he can take a hit. Yeah. Um, there's uh, Ribbon Girl. Yeah. Uh, she's got like a popcorn popper. Like, and another feature was like uh, before each each round, you had like uh, a selection of three. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, three different uh, types of uh, of gloves that you could equip uh, on on each hand, so you could have like two of the same or one um, on one hand and a different on a, on the other. Uh, that could, would kind of switch up your your play style. Uh, Ribbon Girl had like a, a popcorn popper, which looked pretty neat. It was like a popcorn bucket, but then like it would like shoot out kind of a shotgun. Of, of something <laughs> um, yeah I, I really like the character designs there was a little uh, I think I, I think I messaged you with this but there's a little almost overwatch like a Japanese overwatch look to it um, 
the kind of crazy over the top characters. Yeah, uh, I I can I can kind of see that. Um, it, it's definitely more stylized uh, than I would say Overwatch is. Oh, definitely. Um, but it definitely has that uh, that um, it looks like they're they're. It looks like you could build a universe off of this. Mm -hmm. I would say. Um, and I'm I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the gameplay, um, and I I definitely have to get this one. Mm -hmm. uh, Poyu Poyu Tetris. Um, yeah, I. <laughs> uh, it it looks. I mean, when you when you describe it, it's it's Tetris and uh, Poyu Poyu, uh, which is like that. Uh, Kirby, Kirby's Avalanche, Doctor Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, Yoshi's kind of. uh, Safari, yeah. or not Safari. Um, no, Safari was the the big uh, on rail shooter one. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking of something. Some there was a there was like a, a Yoshi or, or Mario game. It, it was basically the same Animal Crossing Puzzle League. Well, that's a different. You that that's it. Puzzle League's completely different. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, because I'm I'm actually good at Puzzle League and I'm terrible at Poyo Poyo Pop. Oh, so. All oh, right, because uh, Puzzle League is just like arranging the blocks that are on screen. Uh, yeah. Poyo Poyo is, uh, you have basically the or like um, they're like colored jellies that Doctor Mario. No, but see, I'm good at Doctor Mario and I'm oh. terrible at this game. It okay, really is different. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to like find things that like I have I have played that like I. You haven't played any version of this, of uh, Poyo Poyo. Pop? I played Mean Bean Machine. Okay, it's that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, but basically, it's uh, kind you have of like a two jellies that come down, like colored jellies that come down at a time, and you have to rotate them and then uh, get them. Like if you put them next to each other, they kind of merge, mm -hmm. and you want to get three or more in a row. Yeah, but, um, but I'm like, awful at it. It's like that and Tetris at the same time, uh, which is just which is bonkers. Yeah, um, try wrapping your head around that. I yeah, like one person can be playing Tetris and the other one can be playing Poyu Poyu Pop. Yeah. Uh, and then sometimes there's a game mode they showed off where it switches back and forth, like every drop is different. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how that works. That would be uh, that would be nerve wracking at best. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I I think that would uh, that looks like another one that would be uh, that would be a fun party game. I can also see people um, really. Uh, really putting a lot of like uh professional time into that for um probably like games done quick or something yeah something of that nature uh which by the way uh i believe they just concluded they raised they met their goal of uh two million dollars uh so if you haven't um uh i believe they've uploaded all their videos to, to youtube or if they haven't already they're going to so definitely check out some of the speed runs uh for that <clears throat> um what were they speed running uh, they did a lot of stuff. They did uh, Super Metroid, uh, Monkey Ball. Oh, okay. Um, I think they finished with Undertale, which was they did a lot of uh, pretty neat stuff for that. Okay. Um, so you need to beat Undertale before you, <laughs> before you do that, yeah. <clears throat> before you watch it. Uh, Rhyme, which was previously a PlayStation 4 exclusive, mm -hmm. is now coming to Nintendo Switch. Exclusively or in addition to? No, in addition to. And okay. th these are these are spring titles, the okay. ones that I'm re reading off yeah. now. Um, I I don't know too much about Rhyme. Just uh, I really only know from like a couple of articles that I've seen. Uh, it looks it looks very similar in in style to uh, games like Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah, um, it's a bit more of like a open exploration game mixed with tower defense is how I've heard it described. Mm -hmm. And this game has similar to. Uh, games like Shadow of the Colossus also having a uh, difficult time in development. So I wasn't sure. Like we haven't heard anything new about this game for quite some time. Yeah. So it's weird that it's apparently coming out in spring. But uh, here's hoping that uh, we we uh, that it, it makes it here all right. Because mm -hmm. uh, it'd be it'd be terrible if it got here and uh, all all that that work was was for nothing. Did you have somewhere else you were going with um, that? Or? I, I don't know. Okay. Disgaea 5, complete. Um, was it incomplete before? <laughs> I think there's, I don't know, DLC maybe that they've put into it? Maybe. But that came out early last year, I want to say, on uh, on PlayStation 4. Mm -hmm. And I, I've always wanted to get into the Disgaea games, 
and I just never have. So I was I was going to pick up five, but it's very rare. Yeah. And I feel like I'd put more time into it if it were on a handheld. And so here we go. Yeah, this it's, will be. This is your end. Yeah. Have you played the Disgaea game? Uh, I've played the first one. Uh, it is so hard. Um, <laughs> I don't know if the first one is the hardest in the series. Uh, but Charles, you can level up to nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. Oh, why don't I? <laughs> so just level up to that, and then it'll be yeah, easy. I'll just keep playing stage one and, <laughs> and do that. Wait, are you really stuck on stage one? Uh, no, I was. Uh, I forget how far I got. I got. I didn't get very far in it. Uh, I got maybe like I want to say like maybe five stages in. They're very long stages. Okay. Uh, it's a very it's a very strategic RPG. So a little harder than Fire Emblem. Uh, it's it's very unforgiving. <laughs> um, I don't think it has the permadeath. Okay. That Fire Emblem does, but the uh, it's it's definitely brutal. Okay. I've heard five is a little is a better place to start. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. It's it's an absolutely charming game, uh, or or series. Um, It has a lot of uh, a lot of weird humor, um, and the the character designs are are pretty neat. Uh, The gameplay is just challenging. (laughs) Okay, so summer, Splatoon two. Yes, Uh, this is going to be my Splatoon game. Have you wait? You've played. I've played. A, I've played a little bit of Splatoon. Have you played online? Uh, I don't think so. I, think I, f- I feel like I've asked you this before. No. I mean, it would have been any time that I was over at your house. So okay. I think we only played it the once, and I think I pretty much only played uh, in a single player. Okay. Uh, so it it doesn't look like a whole lot has changed, but it looks everything looks generally improved. Mm-hmm. Um. The thing I'm most interested to see is what they... It's not something they focused on, which is the single-player mode. Uh, it looked like there might have been more of a story this time around. Because uh, the first game had like a mission mode with a uh, very thin plot connected mm-hmm. to it. But I kind of hope they explore more of the universe. Yeah. It, it almost seemed like the Octolings uh, were going to have more of a prominent role. I feel like they might have cut some stuff out. Because there were some scenes in like the initial trailers for Splatoon that we never ended up seeing. Yeah. And uh, this is a world that I would love to know more about. Definitely. But, I mean, the gameplay itself is fun. Don't get me wrong, but... Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm always have, have more a, a little, single-player Having a little guy. bit more, m- more meat to the bone never hurts. Yeah. Um, so, new weapon types. The... What were those things called? The twin... The, the, the twin... Twin blasters or, or dual shooters? Yeah, they had some name for it, but they're basically twin pistols. Yeah. Uh, which give you a lot of um, speed enhancements because you can dodge out of the way, and it looks like you can do that a lot of times in a row. Yeah. So this looked almost overpowered. <laughs> a, a little bit. Uh, I'm sure there's prob- there, there's got to be some sort of... Uh, there has to be some kind of cost to, mm-hmm. to that. Like maybe you use up a certain amount of ink to do that. Um you keep doing that then you run out of ink uh i'm sure there's some limitation uh there's also a jet pack yeah that's one of like the uh specials so you like you get a i'm not sure what was was it a different weapon that you got when you went to the jet pack mode uh i'm not sure because uh i don't i'm not sure if they explained it later because i didn't see that part of the the treehouse stream okay um but i did see it in the trailer um that, right. that it's there that's about <laughs> all i know about it it exists yeah um, so there's not a whole lot to talk about with this one. I'm very excited for it, but um, there wasn't a whole lot of like really new stuff. Yeah. Uh, the one concerning thing is they said they're going to be doing a similar... Uh, this game is going to be developed in a similar style to the original Splatoon, where they launch it and then they continue to support it with free content. Why is that uh, concerning? Uh, because my the whole th- I told you this on the last podcast, but I kind of like overdid it early on with Splatoon, right. and I lost interest by the time all the good stuff started coming out. Right. And I really hope that there's more than five maps. Mm. Um, also, they sh- they need to get rid of the limit of only having two maps available every like two hours. Is that still a thing? That's still a thing. Yes. Oh wow. You still have to wait like two hours until the maps swap out. Okay. Um. Yeah. If 
I feel like if they if they go in, uh, if they bring everything that the first game had and just kind of like add on to it and enhance it, uh, they'll definitely be going out the gate stronger uh, than if they basically repeat what happened. Yeah, they didn't say they're bringing over the content from the last game, though. So we really don't know. Yeah, I'm sure they'll bring one or two fan favorites over mm -hmm. with probably like a couple of uh, gameplay tweaks or... Or I was going to say, I was just about to ask you what maps you wanted to see come over, but then... Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, the, that the, one. the only one I know is Urchin Underpass. I just know the name of that. Yeah, so we won't stay on this one too much longer. Um, any other thoughts? Um, no, I, I'm very excited. Uh, one thing that's really neat is that a lot of... It kind of feels like a lot of things that were on the Wii U uh, are sort of getting a, uh, a fresh breath. Uh, on the Switch, so for me, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna think. I feel like I'm gonna end up playing a lot of uh, Wii U games um, on the Switch, and that probably will be for my benefit because I might be playing the like the best version of those games. Because mm -hmm. they didn't announce any other uh, remasters, though. No, or enhanced ports. Mm -hmm. um, oh, also, uh, local multiplayer in Splatoon Two. Oh, that's a, that is a thing. Yeah, that is a thing. So you can play. They didn't specify if like you can only play if there's four people or, um, but there's up to eight player, local multiplayer. Okay, which that's is nice a... because the uh, local multiplayer that was in the original Splatoon was the worst ever. <laughs> it was l literally just like balloon battle or something, wasn't it? Yeah, but I mean there was just no fun to it. You can't strategize when there's only one other player. Right. It's like I wonder where they are. Probably that like purple mess that's coming my way. Hmm. What could it be? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. If you only, just went around only, trying to pop I, balloons. If only I could like look at their screen and see where they are. <laughs> um. But yeah, and especially with like being able to bring your own system. Uh, I could see a lot of people getting together, and like they showed in the initial reveal, they had like a they had the two teams, and they each brought their own system. Mm -hmm. Um. And slotted them in, and uh, were. Uh, the, ready to go on a four on four match, mm -hmm. um, so I I'm excited about the potential for that. That looks like a lot of fun. Definitely, uh, fall 2017, The Elder Scrolls Five Skyrim. Yes, remastered. yes. Uh, I I I love Skyrim. Uh, it is it's so much fun. I, I came to Skyrim uh, a lot later than than everyone else, um, and I I still have you beat there. I've <laughs> never played it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so one of these days you're gonna have to get into it, mm -hmm. and then and then you'll never forgive me. Um, <laughs> and uh, one of the things, uh, one of the things that I've I've been wanting is a uh, a portable version that I can just play whenever or like at work when I'm not getting any calls and I still have like two hours of my shift left. <laughs> um, uh, so, is there anyone there to like walk by and see you playing Skyrim? At, at, at that point, not really. Everyone, really? everyone else has, has pretty much gone home, or like anyone who matters <laughs> has, has left. Wow, um, that sounds like really terrible. <laughs> anyone that matters. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, anyone. It's like, any, well, there's that janitor, but who cares? Any anyone who would uh, who would rat me out. Yeah. <laughs> basically, any managers. Okay. Um, at least in my immediate area. Okay. So. Um, so I'm I'm really excited. Uh, it looks like it's uh, Skyrim Special Edition. Uh, so we're not getting you know an old version of Skyrim. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm assuming it comes with the DLC as well. Yes, the Special Edition uh, has all the DLC. Okay, baked into it. Mm -hmm. Nice uh, little light I, I don't, of Skyrim. Yeah, I don't even have all the, the the DLC for the original game. I just keep playing the the base game. Uh, I mean, I've modded it a, a good bit. I have Cloud's Buster Sword and this like, weird time stop uh, power, but uh, other than that, you know, vanilla Skyrim, all right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm super excited about portable Skyrim. Yeah, that seems really neat. I might have to pick it up on Switch. Yeah, we'll play um, together, even though it's a one-player game. <laughs> now, the game that you've we've all been waiting to talk about, uh -huh. Ultra Street Fighter Two, The New Challengers. Or, sorry, the final challengers. You, I think you probably have a stronger history of Street Fighter than uh, I do. Not much. I was, I was. <laughs> you got, you got the Street Fighter for the 3DS. Because yeah, because it was literally was the only game. Yeah. Um. It's Street Fighter Two again. Yeah. And in the the uh, 
like sizzle reel for the third party games. I thought this was Virtual Console. It's it's, just... It wasn't until after that I realized, wait, this is a brand new game, because they showed the pixel art yeah. version. It's... And so now there's uh, Evil Ryu and Violent Ken. They they will they weren't already evil and violent. <laughs> I mean they're I mean, fighting it... on the streets. <laughs> I was just gonna say. I mean, it is Street Fighter. I mean, do you have any thoughts on this? What, what is, does does Ken tuck them into bed <laughs> and read them read them a story? Does he? Is that how he? That's his it? ultra combo. <laughs> Can you imagine like a fighting game where the fi- like the, the ultra move is is that they tuck them into bed and read them a story, <laughs> and kiss them on the forehead, and then their health bar just like slams to empty. <laughs> But like all, like he's jumping all over the place with like cinematic camera views. Yeah, like he like leaps across the room, and then like like sh- he does like a shoryuken to get up to the top shelf to get the book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, it's Street Fighter, two. Yeah. It uh, I kept ex- I kept waiting for uh, cause it, it showed like the on the bottom of the screen like player against player or like fight together, and I kept waiting for like four players, and I was like, oh. I guess Street Fighter was only ever a two-player game. Well, no, there's, like, three-player is what they showed off. Did you see that? There was, like, what? Ryu and Ken beating up M. Bison. Well, they probably, I think, they're fighting against, like, a computer player. Yeah, probably. not, like, four... But that just seems messed up, though. Like, two-on-one? <laughs> uh, I guess it would have to be a tough one. I, don't I know. guess you set the level higher. Maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, I'm sure there are a lot of people who are very excited about this, and I'm, I'm sure it, it's probably, probably a good thing for like maybe Street Fighter tournaments uh, or what have you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's not something that I think either of us are particularly excited about. Yeah, I mean, this is like the this is the best version of a 1992 game that you can play. Yeah, and I, I think that's uh, it. That's about the best <laughs> that either <laughs> of us can say about it. Uh, FIFA. Sports. Um, it's a game where you kick a ball around uh-huh. and you try and get it in the net. What version is it? Like what year? Uh, it's not a year. It's just FIFA. Oh, the, okay. So it's the soft reboot of, of football. Yeah, they're <laughs> they're rebooting of, it. Of foot soccer. Yeah. Um, th- this didn't really. The only thing I noticed was that this does look at least somewhat comparable to the current like Xbox One, PS4 versions. But, I mean, how hard can it be to render a football field? Well, I mean the character models. Like, the character models always look good. They've, they've been looking good. Except for that <laughs> one year where they, they, they let for you... The, when they did When they let you put your face in there, and it just was bad. Well, you know what I mean, though. Like, this is, this is at least... It looked comparable, to. Yeah. Um, I think it's pretty obvious neither of us are, are very interested in... I was trying to find something positive to say about it. Um, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2... That uh, that's a, that came out on a couple other systems already. Yeah, last year, late last year. So, um, have you ever played a Dragon Ball Z game? Uh, I haven't even watched the anime. Okay. So uh, uh, it's a bunch of muscly dudes punching each other with like unreal levels of power. I do know that much. So, and this is a game about it. Okay. You know, everyone everyone's uh, power fantasy. <laughs> NBA Two K Eighteen. Moving on, <laughs> steep. What's that? Is that is that a? It's either a mountain climbing game or a skiing game. No, it's a downhill like extreme sports. Like they show skiing, snowboarding, and like I don't know, uh, like flying squirrel suit. Oh, yeah. The most interesting thing to me about steep is that this actually is a very uh, graphically intensive game, mm-hmm. and it looks gorgeous. At least, I mean, I'm assuming that was PS4 footage they were showing. Because there's no release date for this game. Yeah, um, I I honestly haven't seen too much other than like maybe some cover art. Um, okay. But uh, it I don't know. It, it sounds more fun than uh, than the other two sports games. <laughs> well, I mean, I think extreme sports games are typically uh, more fun. Mm-hmm. But Sonic Mania which they hadn't confirmed previously, but I think we all assumed it was coming to Switch. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's nice to have that confirmation, though. Yeah, I, I'm very excited for 
for Sonic Mania. It, it looks like the, the Sonic game that basically we've wanted for a long time. Surprisingly not done by uh, Sonic Team. Yeah. Done by like some fans. Which I think is... I love... I love how Sega uh, has basically embraced its fandom. Yeah. Uh, in stark contrast to the way Nintendo has kind of shunned it. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the normal fandom, not like the original character fandom. Those are, those are two Well, different. you have the, the Sonic Twitter, so... What is that? The the, uh, the Sonic Twitter account. Oh, you don't... You're not... Um, you have to have seen, like, screenshots, though. What, or, or what is this? It's uh, the the uh, basically the the Sonic uh, Twitter account uh, is very tongue in cheek. It like it knows that like a lot of people make fun of like certain really? certain things in the games, uh, like Big the Cat or uh, how like Sonic O Six is terrible. So um, is this and like it, it like it openly says like yeah this sucks and it is pretty funny. <laughs> and so is this like a fan done? No, it's like an official. It's really? the official Sonic the Hedgehog account. Is this so? This is run by Sega. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's kind of cool. I, I need I to see think, that. I just think that's the greatest thing ever. Uh, Minecraft. It, uh, the Switch edition. It was. It was a. It was a given. Yeah. It's come to literally every platform. It, like including Wii U, which is like scraping the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Um, and it came I think to the Wii U really late. Yeah, because this is now a Microsoft franchise, though. Microsoft bought the rights. Yeah. So this is our first Xbox game on on Switch. Does the Switch support Xbox Glass? Confirm or deny? <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think we all expected that Minecraft would show up in some form or another. And from the, the sizzle reel, it looks like we're also getting the story mode. Yeah. Which, do people still care about care about that at this point? Um, uh, I don't know. I thought it was over. I thought it was too. Is this like the complete story? Maybe. Yes. I mean, I, I would I would probably get into it if it were the complete thing, because I'm really not interested in spending uh, $5 uh, again and again and again. I already did that with, uh, uh, what is it, Phantom... Fa What's the Phantom Detective? Ghost Trick. Oh. Uh, I already did that with Ghost Trick on, on iOS. Oh, okay. I was going to say, that was a complete game, but that was on DS. So. Yeah, on iOS, uh, each each chapter was uh, was a separate okay. purchase. And I just, like, I had just gotten my, my debit card, so I was like, I can spend money. <laughs> so I was like, I, I, like, in one night, I ended up getting the whole thing. Wow. Uh, what were we talking about? Minecraft. Yeah. Uh, Project Octopath. Uh, yeah. This is one of the things they showed in the the, uh, the initial... Yeah. It looks thing. like a Bravely Default game. Mm -hmm. It has the same art style. Um, Except everything least... is pixel art. Like, the car like the enemies yeah. and stuff. That was weird. Like, the concept art is it's very Bravely Default. Mm -hmm. um, but everything... Ev the whole world is, is rendered in pixel art, but in a 3D space. And not... Not like in in three D dot heroes, mm -hmm. um, but it's it's like three like pixel sprites in a three D environment, which is I don't know they just make it look so good. Yeah, we didn't really find out much about it though. No. So, but uh, I'm 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 excited to learn more about it. I'm hesitantly uh, interested. I've not been the biggest fan of the Bravely games, mm -hmm. just because I think I'm all for like retro RPG throwbacks, but I think they threw too far back with this. Yeah. There were things that they incorporated that I just didn't like. Well, the I think the first game had a stronger story. Uh, the second game had um, better mechanics. Uh, I only played like a little bit of the first game. Was uh, the story strong though? Like that was one of the things that made me stop playing it. Was just how generic it was the characters were more memorable i think is is what i'm thinking okay um because it was kind of like you I, just go do the thing and get the crystals and yeah. save the world yeah which is like the plot of every final fantasy ever yeah so dragon quest stuff is partially exciting yeah 
uh, in that Japan is getting another yet another uh, version of Dragon Quest X, and of course they're getting eleven, which we knew prior, but they'd said those were only in Japan. So, yeah. your thoughts? Um, well, <laughs> region free. Yeah, good luck understanding a story-rich RPG. I'll get a book. <laughs> that what? A translation book? Yeah. That will take forever. <laughs> but you know what? I'll learn something, and at the end of the day, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be a better person because of it. Do you think Dragon Quest X is going to work, though, since it's an MMO? Um, I'm, sh I'm, I'm sure that you could play any MMO without, like, reading anything and, and <laughs> at least ma make some sort of progress. Through just uh, bumbling around. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to interact with other players. Yeah. Uh, like, just to turn, like, voice chat on and be that, like, uh, that, like generic like racist american is like speak english <laughs> it's like how about we just wait for them to localize the game or find <laughs> someone who's made a patch for localization i don't think i don't think there'd be a way to get that on switch though uh well because like, the game it's an mmo from the wii mm -hmm. so i'm sure like people have hacked the wii pretty easily now so oh yeah i mean they've stopped updating the wii so yeah, and I'm assuming Wii U is pretty much dead as well. Yeah. So. I mean, I'm sure they'll. It, it's, it's probably going to have a few more updates down the line, but I think in a couple of years they're going to stop updating it, and then the I Wii U. I think Wii's... in a few months they're going to stop <laughs> updating it. <laughs> but once they stop doing that, or even before, I'm sure the Wii U is probably going to become a pretty coveted modders project. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I am very, very, very excited about this. It looks really cool. I love the art style, too, because they're going away from the more realistic look of mm -hmm. the first two, or I guess the first one and the spinoff. Um, but, like, the characters the characters looked kind of creepy uh, in X. Like, it was kind of clear playing the game that they spent most of their time artistically making the world and the creatures, because mm -hmm. the game looked fantastic. It was just the character models were a bit stiff. Yeah. Um, and I, I haven't played enough of either to really have uh, any sort of opinion one way or the other. Yeah, but the setting looks really nice, too. Like, the whole sky area. Yeah. Yeah. I need to go back and watch the, uh, the trailer for it again. I think I've watched it, like, five times already. <laughs> uh, I've watched the, uh, the Mario one, I think, the most. Yeah. Uh, are we getting close to that one? Very close. Really yeah, I'm trying to cover everything. I and then really want to talk about I know. Mario. I know. But see, we're not gonna. I'm gonna forget the other games if we don't talk about it now. Right. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei something. Uh, yeah. They they just announced that a Shin Megami Megami ten, <laughs> ten, Tensei. Uh, the uh, they there's a new game coming out. Uh, that's all we know. Yep. That was there. There was like a I don't know thirty second trailer. Mm -hmm. Of and they, they showed like a, they showed like a bunch of uh, a bunch of characters from it. Yeah. But it's being built with the Unreal 4 engine. Yeah, that's the... Uh, they just came out with Unreal 4, didn't mm -hmm. they? Like, yeah, that like was that was the ago. biggest surprise, because not a lot of Japanese developers are making games with the Unreal. Yeah. I think uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 is, though. I think they switched development over to uh, the Unreal Engine 4. Okay, that'll so. be interesting. Um, and then the last game, before we get to Mario, <laughs> uh, is Fire Emblem Warriors. Yeah, so this is, uh, I guess a, this is another entry in the the Warriors uh, line mm -hmm. uh, of products, uh, Hyrule Warriors, Dragon Quest Warriors. That's not now. a thing. It's uh, Dragon Quest Heroes. Heroes. Yeah, because okay. it's not. It's being developed by a different team. Okay, but it's the same. Same kind of gameplay. They just it's like they can't use that name because it it it's not Tecmo developing it. So okay. Um, but uh, it's Fire Emblem is getting the, they did the One Warriors. Piece Warriors though One Piece Warriors yeah That's I, think, I hadn't heard of that that should be interesting I think they made like three of them oh are they good I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I would like I, I kind of want to try one though yeah I I remember I, I used to really like the One Piece anime like what little bit of it that I I was able to see because uh, it came mm -hmm. on like so late at night I was never able to watch it what channel 
Uh, I think they had it on Cartoon Network as part of like their Toonami. Oh, okay. Was it like the um, wh- like which, the, which the four kids? Oh, was it the four kids dub? I think so. Oh, okay. With like the the terrible voices. Uh-huh. I think they only had like four tracks of music for any of their animes. <laughs> their an- their animes. Yeah, I have a friend who's massively into One Piece, and he I I tried I really tried to get into it. Um, and the first season was actually entertaining. Like I, I genuinely enjoyed it, and then season two just got so dumb. I, I've heard that like there there are some parts where you really just have to muscle through before it starts getting good again. Yeah, I think there was one of the story arcs uh, took me like a year to finish. Dang. Because <laughs> I just didn't want, and it was only like you know ten episodes long, but it was just so hard. It's like I, okay, I'm gonna get through it. I'm gonna get through it, and it was so stupid that I that I. I don't know. I have this thing where I like have to go in order, mm-hmm. but I know a lot of people kind of skip around. I I'm like that too, so it's it's kind of hard for me to like just jump back into something. Yeah. Uh, especially these days where like a lot more shows are are kind of relying on information from past episodes. So like there will be a character that is like m- like had a major like surprising reveal that they're just like in another episode and is like, well what? <laughs> well why are they? Well, I thought they were the bad guy. <laughs> Steve, Steven Universe is like that, so that's part of the reason. Like, I'm way behind on on that. I've never watched it. It's really good. Oh, okay. You, you, we'll have to. We should do like a, a Steven Universe viewing party or something. Just the two of us. Okay. Uh, we should get Isaac in on it. On it too. I don't know if he watches that. We'll we'll make him watch it. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna make him watch Super Mario Brothers <laughs> movie, so. Uh, why not? And what other ever other horrors that uh, we find down the road? Yeah, the only other like the only other video game movie uh, I know that I've seen is I think I've seen both the Tomb Raider movies. Oh, okay, I have not seen that, so uh, I, we'll have to get to those eventually. Yeah. Uh, back to Hyrule. Sorry, not Hyrule. Yeah. Uh, back uh, to Fire Emblem. Warriors. Fire Emblem Warriors. They literally showed us like nothing uh we saw uh crom's leg his sword and his hand and i think his chin yeah because they panned up i i only knew it was fire emblems because like i recognized some of the weapons from yeah. like smash brothers <laughs> <laughs> but this is like the perfect fit like way more so than even zelda so i've mm. been wanting this game for a long time so i was so excited when when I saw that. I think I sent you like a bunch of excited messages. Yeah. Now you, you're you're a larger fan of Fire Emblem than I am. So why why is why is it a better fit for for warriors than, than something like Zelda? Uh, because like the whole thing is opposing armies. The whole thing of uh, the Fire Emblem games. Uh, there's a there's a whole bunch more characters mm-hmm. that like more easily fit. Like they had to pick some weird characters to to appear. Like, they had, like, uh, in the newest DLC, I think, for Hyrule Warriors, they had um, Marin, I think. Like, from Link's Awakening. What? Yeah. She called in, like, the, the windfish as one of her moves. No way! Yeah. That's really cool! I'm pretty sure that was that was a thing. The thing it's about the that, one. though, is that, like, it feel Like... I don't know if this is kind of what you were getting at. It, it almost feels like a lot of the characters in in Hyrule Warriors were were just fan service. Yeah. Whereas I feel like any any one game would have enough characters to make an entire Hyrule like an entire Warriors title out of. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I see the, uh, with the opposing armies. My only con- concern is that just from what I've seen of of the, your typical Warriors game is that it, it revolves around you playing as one character who takes out entire armies. Well, yeah. That, I mean, they could definitely add some more strategic elements to it. I'm not saying that that series is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's one of those like guilty pleasure series. That's that's what I've heard a lot of people say about it. Yeah, it's it's mindless fun, but I think, and they kind of got a little bit into this with um, Hyrule Warriors Legends on the 3DS. Was you could like swap, you could tap, like you could look at the touch screen and tap any commander on the battlefield and switch to them. Mm-hmm. So if there was an objective that was that you'd have to get like run across the field to get to, you could just switch to another character. But other than that, not really too much strategy. Yeah. 
So hopefully they implement a little bit more strategy into the game. Yeah, uh, especially considering that they're taking a very heavy strategy game uh, and and kind of slapping their, their Warriors yeah. logo on it. So I hope they do a little bit more uh, Fire Emblem fan service. Uh, also, Fire Emblem is a way more over-the-top game as far as the combat's concerned. Like, mm -hmm. there's some crazy attacks. Just from the little bit I've played, like, I, I loved the attack animations. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, Link just kind of swings his sword and does a spin attack, so they had to add a whole bunch of... Yeah. I mean, all the characters, they added crazy moves to, but I think it's a little bit more fitting for the Fire Emblem brand. Right. Uh, that's pretty much all I had on it. Let's just go ahead and hop into Super Mario Odyssey. So You know Clover's excited. <laughs> Are you excited about Super Mario Odyssey? She says, I want to go to New Donk City. <laughs> <laughs> that was the craziest thing. Oh my gosh. I was gosh. like, I didn't know what, because they didn't say, like, here's the next Mario game, and mm -hmm. then start the trailer. The trailer just started, and I was yeah. like, what game is this? And I didn't see New Donk City or Dixie Street, mm -hmm. uh, Expresso Lane or whatever, Ramby Road. I didn't see that stuff until I went back and watched it later. Yeah. But, like, it starts off, and, like, there's just, like, a, your normal, like, city like New York City, their taxi cabs and everything. With like normal, realistic looking humans? Yeah, just normal, boring, <laughs> 19 something, 19 something humans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the craziest way to start. And <laughs> then like Mario pops out of a. A, a sewer a, lid. A sewer. He jumps out of a manhole and starts running around, and there's like these normal, these normal people just like looking at this this weird, <laughs> weird tiny man, this weird tiny cartoon man running around their their home of New Donk City. <laughs> uh, I, I, there's just so many things to to say just in New Donk City. I mean, did you, you notice? I'm I'm sure all of the red girders mm -hmm. all over the city. Uh, obvious reference to the old Donkey Kong arcade game. Do yeah. you think we're going to see Donkey Kong characters in a Mario game? That's never happened before, the, the core Super Mario platformers. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to see them as like major characters. Uh, at best, I think we'll probably see uh, references to them. Yeah, I mean, I assumed... Because, I mean, like with the street names, it's Dixie Street. Yeah. You okay? I assume that was just for, uh, like, Easter eggs. Yeah. But the weird thing is, like, in the Mario universe, like, Donkey Kong and, and company exist in the Mario universe. Right. So, like, but, where is this city that's named after these cartoon monkeys? Yeah. And I'm sure the the game story will, will probably justify some of that. Yeah. Um, oh, God. How do... <laughs> how do you even start... It's so um, it sh they show Mario like jumping in between buildings, like doing his wall jump uh, between buildings, and uh, he he has this move where he like throws his his hat and it stays in the air for a moment, and then he can like jump on it again to get some extra jump. Yeah, um, or use it as a platform to cross larger areas. Yeah, like kind of a, a bouncy stepping stone. Um. And he, he's running around, he's jumping on, on buildings and stuff, and it's, and then he gets onto this giant, like, cat-in-the-hat spaceship. <laughs> like, it literally looks like a, like a, like a giant red top hat spaceship. With a globe. Yeah, with, with like, some kind of globe and a sail. Um, and you know what? This game, like, the logo and his hat ship remind me of, like, a Mario Edutainment game. Yeah? I can't shake that feeling. Like, it feels like I should be learning something, but... <laughs> Like, honestly, like, the city vibe, too, it was like, is this, uh, Mario, is this Luigi is missing? Yeah, Mario, <laughs> yeah, this time it, uh, Mario's missing, this time it's <laughs> Luigi. Um, I hope we get uh, as good a meme out of, out of that as, uh, as we've gotten with the, the Ouija. Yeah. Um, but he, he flies the, this hat ship, uh, and then it shows him in the, uh, the desert, the they frozen desert. The, the frozen desert, which they stole my idea for there to be a desert with ice in it. Uh, Were you I, really going to put that in, uh, in, in Questy Plus? Yeah. yeah. I Are was you gonna, still doing it? I mean... Because now anyone who's played... Like, 
anyone is going to think that you copied that? Well, my idea was that the dungeon would be would be ice and sand. Oh, okay. So there would be a lot more puzzles centered around that. Oh, okay. uh, this just looks like it's more of an aesthetic aesthetic thing. Yeah, I did like showing him like at night freezing next to next to a thing of ice. Yeah, um, it it it's a, it's like a sandbox Mario, mm -hmm. the, the the type of game that we've wanted for like a long time, and like the type of game that Super Mario Galaxy like almost was. The uh, one thing I don't know if you noticed this uh, the the act the the city that it starts off with, mm -hmm. New Donk. Yeah, New Donk City. Um, doesn't look that big. No, the other worlds look bigger. Yeah, all of the other worlds look bigger. But like the city, like there, there's like a, a there's like a noticeable kind of like fog surrounding it. Well, like, like when he's we're... jumping off the top of that skyscraper, mm -hmm. like you can see the exact boundaries of it. Yeah, and that like all the other buildings are just a like textured background. Which honestly, if there's enough worlds, which I'm assuming there's more than just these uh, four that they showed off. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming that, like, it, it, I don't think it's going to matter as much right. if the worlds are a little smaller. And as long as there's, like, un enough to do uh, in each world. Because, like, Delfino's, Delfino Plaza, mm -hmm. very small. Yeah. Very small map. But it feels like there's so much to do. Yeah. Um, and I think that, that definitely helps with the, the with making it seem a lot larger than it is. Um, so if there's a lot to do in New Donk City and, and each of these worlds, then I don't I don't really don't see the size of them being that that problem. Yeah. The main thing is that basically we've got these sandbox environments to run around in, yeah. and I think that's and fabulous. a lot of moves. Mm -hmm. Like they've been slowly cutting Mar down Mario's move set. Yeah, and it seems like they're adding in most of the old ones and then adding some new ones yeah he's got like this rolling move where yeah. you can like gain he can like do kind of like a burst and get a little bit of speed um so that looks like a lot of fun yeah so they showed off the the frozen desert world um they also like there was that clip where he jumps on the back of i don't like know like the some, golden lion yeah yeah that reminded me very much of uh super mario land have you played that game yeah, I have. I'm trying to remember. Like that was like the first world boss was like that giant lion. It's been that a while. So just I don't... like that. So also a lot of like upside down pyramids that seem to be flying off. Yeah. So uh, the reverse Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> um, it made me wonder, like, if, if there is some kind of connection to Super Mario Land. I would be into that. I really would. Like, it, what if this is um, Sarasa Land? I I'm like in 3D. I would be I would be cool with that. Um, the, what else? They show this weird uh, Dark Souls esque forest. Yeah, that was strange. Yeah, he it's like this is like this wide shot of like Mario like walking in through like these, these enormous trees and like you can't even see this the uh, the the sky because the foliage is so thick. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like all and everything dark. looks so much more real than Mario. It's yeah. crazy. And then you just have, like, these Goombas walking around, like, mm -hmm. in, in New Donk City. There's, like, a Goomba on top of a building. It's, like, and coins. Yeah. It's so weird. But I think it's going to be great. Yeah, it, it looks like a lot of fun. There's, like, this A vegetable world. Yeah, this weird, like, low-poly, like, rainbow yeah. food world. <laughs> and they're, like, these... The people are, like, these forks. Dancing forks. Dancing forks. And you can, like, dance with them. Yeah. Um... Apparently, soup is harmful. Oh, yeah. Well, it's hot soup. Mm -hmm. You don't just jump in hot soup. <laughs> and then, I, I love that one shot where you see the, like, hammer bro with a chef hat, and he's throwing, uh, he's throwing pans. Oh. So I definitely got a, uh, Cheese Land vibe from that one. Cheese Land. Uh, was that in Mario Land 2? No, that was in... Uh, okay, you haven't played this one. Uh, that was in Mario Kart Super Circuit. Ah. Uh. It was a track style. Like, you were driving across cheese. Okay. And you had, like, cheese mountains and whatever. So it seems like there's, like, little inspirations from past games. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily even uh, main series Mario games. Right. Um, but... Uh... They show Bowser, and he's all tucked up. 
he's he's got like this fancy white suit and top yeah. hat and everything uh riding his his like his pearly airship uh and then it showed i think the i guess the what are going to be the the five main boss characters are like this gang of rabbits i think there's only four four which was a little concerning because that might mean that there are only four worlds i i thought there were there were five rabbits i might be remembering it pretty wrong. sure there were four uh, but not Koopalings. Yes. Oh my word, not Koopalings. <laughs> like, thank goodness. Yeah, finally. Um, Peach is there, uh, captured by Bowser again. Um, and Bowser... With the same, the same sound clip of yeah. Mario. Mario! Again. Yeah. What's new? Um, and then Bowser commits the, the unforgivable act of stomping on Mario's hat. Um, how, how dare he? Yes. So I'm guessing that's where Mario gets his new uh, hat with eyeballs. Yeah. So uh, I looks like the like each each Mario game uh, he he kind of has one one sort of like power or or uh, gimmick almost um, one kind of main mechanic. Mm -hmm. um, like in Mario Galaxy, he had the the um, he had the Luma in his hat that would gave him the power to spin. Um, and this one, he's got the hat that, uh, I guess he can throw it like a boomerang, uh, and he can use it for various, various things like, uh, jumping up really, uh, well, I guess extending his jump. Yeah. So with all of these hats being, like hats being a central theme with the hat ship and Bowser's hat that he throws, mm -hmm. um, and hat shops, do you think like uh, hats that you can change out do you think that'll be a thing absolutely it'll be like uh, Majora's Mask with all of the just with hats like yeah each one giving you a different power yeah uh, probably or like you can like customize your hat like maybe there are pins you can get for it or something um, only through my Nintendo mm -hmm. yeah uh, <laughs> that, that costs extra um, you better you better grind it uh, Mitomo for that um but yeah, uh, it looks it looks fantastic. This looks like bigger and more exciting than what I was hoping for. Like I had a whole list of like things that I thought it could be, mm -hmm. and this exceeds like I had my expectations lowered intentionally because Nintendo's yeah. been disappointing us recently. So right. But like this goes beyond what like the maximum of what I thought they could do. Mm -hmm. It, it, I was, you, you, you saw the message I was, I was sending. I was like freaking out. Yeah. I don't know how much more we want to go into it. Um, I think we covered most of it. Yeah. I feel like we, we pretty much talked about ev everything that they announced. Um, uh, I'm just profoundly, uh, saddened, uh, that I'm not going to be able to really, uh, I'm not going to be able to get it like, day one. I um, guess I guess I'm kind of upset. I'm not going to be able to get it uh, day one or even pre-order it, but I should be able to get it uh, very soon after release. Okay. So uh, and uh, I'm going to try my hardest to save up all my pennies so that I can also get Breath of the Wild. How crazy is it that these games are running on cartridges? That blows my mind. Like I can't I can't believe that. I can't believe that they've managed to cram so much content onto such a tiny card. Um, and, like, I mean, like, it's it's not so impressive when you think that, uh, when you, you, you kind of factor that they've got SD cards, like micro SD cards that are, like, two terabytes these days. Um, but, like, it's just incredible that they have a game like that, like, they have games that detailed and complex running on such such small small pieces of hardware mm -hmm. and it's, and even more so that it's like a portable device yeah I, I am I am very much excited for for a Nintendo switch and another thing it at least from what we've seen it doesn't look like the uh, the switch uh, reduces any of its like graphical power the only thing it looks like it does is uh, when it's undocked, uh, it renders at 720 uh, just because the screen 
uh, its own native re- resolution is, yeah. uh, is 720. Did uh, we? But it goes up. I think it, it, they said it either does render or it renders up to 1080. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's just going to be up to the developers, honestly. Yeah. Um, and I, I, we didn't touch on this with the hardware thing, but touchscreen, that wasn't confirmed. Oh, yeah. It's a capacitive uh, touchscreen. To yeah. A, in other words, a good touchscreen. Yes. As opposed to the, like, squishy garbage that was the... <laughs> That was the DS, 3DS, and Wii U touchscreens. Yeah. So, um, we didn't really see a lot of the interface. Like, they showed it for, like... A, like, half like second. Half, <laughs> like, a half second. Um, it looks very streamlined and clean. Mm-hmm. So I I like what little we have seen of it. Um, I can't wait to get my hands on the dang thing. <laughs> like, I... I no, no joke, I'm probably going to not not be able to stop playing it um well i'm going to have to because yeah, i got clover have, and work yeah clover and work so you know i can't always be on it but i am certainly going to be investing a lot of my time in this new system so how would you rate on like a grade scale how would you rate their presentation um i mm, uh, i i initially want to say like an eight um because eight or nine Hmm. Um, just because like they they confirmed so many things that like we were like we were hoping that they would confirm. Yeah. Um, and uh, I really liked the uh, the presentation specifically uh, with like the the Joy Cons. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty cool. Well, and who can forget <laughs> the uh, the director that came out for Splatoon two doing his two pose. Me, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> You don't remember him doing that? He kept doing his like pose for two. He I might, I the... might have been like out of the room at, at that moment, yeah. like probably getting the bottle or, or yeah. something. For I felt so bad for that guy that oh the that poor one translator poor guy. Um, yeah, there there were a few uh, translation stumbles. Yeah, and I mean something something like that. It's it's such a such a big deal. Like everyone's watching. Like I totally get it. Like mm-hmm. I understand you you'd be super nervous. So like like good on them for for persevering yeah i feel like we might have missed some details of what was going on Mm -hmm. but like i don't like because i really don't know anything about the game that they were yeah the the guy came out the uh, suda 51 uh Mm -hmm. to talk about like the new game they're developing i don't remember studios i don't remember what it was well oh wait he can't no it was uh no more no no more heroes 3 that's what it was i can't i could i didn't i didn't remember that but uh no more heroes I, I've never heard of the other two. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Those were huge on, on the Wii. Look up uh, Grasshopper Studios. Okay. They have a whole list of games. Like, I can't remember all of them now, but I, I think if you watch the trailers for any of them, I completely forgot about that. It's it's because I was so focused on him stumbling through it. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I mean, that, that was... That was a pretty high stress situation. Yeah, I, I mean they were translating it live because it was a live event. So yeah, I understand why. And I mean, for all we know, the the person the person who was who was translating uh, could not have been speaking very clearly. Mm-hmm. Maybe he couldn't. Uh, maybe he had a, like a monitor. He couldn't hear uh, what he was saying as well. Yeah, uh, there could have been any number of things. Maybe it was just nerves. It was technical difficulties, or the guy wasn't speaking clearly. Um. <laughs> um but uh, I, I I certainly appreciate uh, all of them for yeah. Bill for... Trennan uh, came in once. Mm, I he... heard his 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 uh, soothing Trennan voice. Yeah, translating uh, into Japanese. No, he 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 was uh, one of the English sections. Oh, he was. Yeah, oh. he was early on. I must he, have missed that. He came out on stage later because I was like, I kept wondering, was like, why isn't Trennan taking over for these people? Because like Trennan is is really really good at. Yeah, uh, translating. I was but, I was surprised uh, to learn that Nate uh, Bildorf is actually the the senior localization. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was Bill. I would have uh, thought it was Bill, since he he's. Yeah, what does Bill do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Not much since they fired him. Remember that one? <laughs> when they hired uh, what was it? Wasn't it Reggie's son or something? That they hired someone. 
Someone's oh. kid. They just hired like a little kid to localize. Yeah, yeah. Splatoon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't like, know what Bill's doing these days. And then days. they like shrank down Bill <laughs> or something. I don't know. It's crazy. But um, so I would I'd give it a seven point five. Okay. Um, and I didn't think they had enough. If I'm being quite honest. Now, you showing enough on, new on games. The content as well as the presentation. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I think I think the what they presented was very strong. I just didn't think they they had just, enough. Yeah, they didn't have like I keep I keep hearing people say, and I completely agree. They needed one more big thing, mm-hmm. um, and I think Pikmin Four could have gone a long way. Uh, I feel like, um, yeah. Let's see. What, what were their biggest ones? Uh, Zelda, Mario, mm-hmm. um, Splatoon Two, and that was those were like the only three big first party games. I mean, they they had Arms. Uh, which they were trying to support a lot, but yeah, that's not like an instant system seller for most people, right? And it doesn't even come packed in with the system, so not everyone's gonna play it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if they had had, if they had shown off uh, Pikmin Four, which obviously they have, they have footage, right? It was almost done like over a year ago. Yeah, but uh, who knows how much has like changed between then and now? I mean, yeah, they could add something in new, but. Have they done anything for Pikmin 4? I think it would have been. Mm-hmm. Uh, e- and also, they had even teased it. Yeah, Retro Studios' new game. Yeah. Which they've been working on for years now. But, the um, Wii U game that they've been transferring over to Switch. But uh, like they said, uh, more details to, to come in the following weeks. Yeah, so. and I'm fine waiting. I'm very patient when it comes to that kind of stuff. But not many people are, and most people don't really realize that there are a whole bunch of more, like, whole bunch more unannounced games that we'll be hearing about soon. Most of the re- the biggest reason this podcast has gone on so long is because we have had to stop <laughs> for multiple minutes at a time. Um, but yeah, uh, I think in terms of presentation, uh, considering like the, the quality of the presentation as well as like what they presented, mm-hmm. um, I agree with you about a 7.5. Um, I'm very excited for what's coming out, oh, but definitely. I think I think there probably could have been a little more that they brought to the table. And I think Pikmin Four would have filled in that spot. Absolutely, um, especially if if they give the same attention to Pikmin Four that they've been giving to Mario and Zelda now. Mm-hmm. I mean, who who knows what we'll see with with Pikmin Four? But I think it's going to be a little different. Yeah, um, I think I I don't know. Um, I feel like, uh, for me personally, because I don't have a Wii U, uh, a lot of these kind of struck a little more uh, strongly for me. Yeah, I can see that. Because, like, uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was not a huge selling point for me. Mm -hmm. I'm still going back and forth on whether I'm going to get it. Yeah, but Um, And Splatoon 2 is exciting, but not nearly as exciting as it would be for someone who hadn't played the first one. Right. Um, but because because these are essentially going to be like my my gateways into into these games, mm-hmm. um, I'm I'm very excited to to be able to play them on on this new system. So it actually turned out pretty well that uh, we both had very different opinions. But yeah, um, but uh, I'm I'm right there with you. If they had announced Pikmin Four, I feel like that could have that could have really rounded it yeah. out. Um, uh, definitely if it had been something from Retro, especially if it were, uh, me- Metroid. Metroid. If, I mean, I don't know, Reggie was saying, t- uh, like, let's talk. talk in a year and see what happened. I, mm-hmm. I feel like we might get, if nothing else, I feel like we'll get a, an announcement, maybe not a trailer or anything, maybe just a teaser, uh, or just them saying, we're working on a new Metroid game. Yeah. When is E3? When does that happen? Uh, in June. Early, in June. mid-June. Okay. So, I, th- I feel like... If anything, we'll we'll hear about it. Yeah, and that's definitely and, a 2018 game, mm-hmm. if not 2019. Yeah. Um, if we even live that long. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I, I'm excited to see what what else they announce in the coming weeks uh, leading up to release. Yeah, this is uh, Kirby's 25th anniversary. Mm-hmm. So. Oh yeah. I would I would expect to see a new Kirby game, mm-hmm. and if it's anything like Robobot. Then I'm super excited. I I would love to see a uh, a three D, like an, an open three D Kirby game. Yeah. Did you play the since you've been playing Robobot? Did you play that three D blast 
minigame? Mm-mm. I, 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 I literally, uh, I picked up the game, uh, I went into the casino stage, uh, and I got to the billiard table, and then I okay. had to turn it off. Well, uh, t- check that mode out, because that basically, that feels like a tech demo for a 3D Kirby. Mm-hmm. From what I've seen, it looks a lot like the, uh, the, the tech, or early, early screenshots of uh, Kirby Return to Dreamland. <laughs> Where they they kind of had that that him running around on top of that the cube with all the um, the scenery on top yeah. of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is we're in like a this is a new Nintendo mm-hmm. with this generation, so I feel like they're willing to take more risks this time around. Yeah. So if we see a 3D Kirby in any generation, I think it's going to be this one. Um, uh, so we should yeah. probably start wrapping this up. Yeah, we're at about a, a hun- uh, oh gosh, 100, uh, an hour. 100 hours. We're almost at an hour and a half. Um, most of that is uh, blank space where uh, Clover made a good bit of noise. Uh, but hopefully you won't hear too much of that. Um, so thank you so much for listening. Uh, this has been our recap of the, the Switch reveal, the huge info dump that they, they mm-hmm. gave us. And we have now given to you for, I guess... Uh, two out, hour, about two hours, <laughs> somewhere around that. Yeah, we'll see with editing. Um, yeah, we actually have a few things to plug, I guess. Mm-hmm. Too. Uh, we do have a new Sonic Adventure playthrough coming up. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna try my hardest to to work on that. If not, then I'll just uh, I'll do my best to give you the. Should I just go ahead and give you the, the video for that? Uh, yeah, sure. I like how the, I like how we're talking about this while <laughs> podcasting. Yeah. Um, well. Rewind that. Uh, we're working on a uh, Sonic Adventure playthrough, uh, so hopefully that'll be up soon. Uh, what else do we have, Zach? Uh, well, I'm doing a uh, playthrough of New Super Mario Brothers U with Isaac, mm-hmm. who's I guess our newest member ish. We kind of drafted him. Yeah, he was needed, so we drafted him. Well, you, the two of you had had started your own thing, uh, and we we kind of like combined yeah so now he's he's part of the quadratics family okay now we are a family of four yeah. <laughs> it's perfect it is and then hopefully we'll get around to our movie thing mm-hmm. uh, we need to work out the details but uh, yeah. we might be having Isaac on that so mm-hmm. um, I'm thinking unless unless Nintendo drops any more uh, any more crazy bombs well we do have the fire emblem direct next oh, week but gosh are we ever going to be able to get to it one of these days, we're just gonna have to like do it. Yeah. Or we'll have to like do a regular uh, podcast and then the same day. Yeah. I keep talking about all this like technical stuff while recording. <laughs> and it was at this point that we lost the end of this episode due to a computer problem. We'd been having this in the past, and I've been able to edit around it for the most part. But this time, it wiped out the last thirty seconds, which just so happened to be us concluding this episode. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience. So without further ado, I'm Zach Tussing, that was Charles Fillmore, and this has been QGP. Thanks for listening.